This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk about transitions inside of Media Composer and more specifically I want to talk about transitions inside of Boris Continuum Complete 10. I'm going to be honest with you, I've never really been a big fan of using anything other than dissolves or the occasional flash to white because to be honest in many cases, transitions can seem to be quote unquote canned quite quickly. You apply a transition like a wipe, there's really no variation to it, and they get boring and repetitive quite quick. But I actually stumbled across the transitions inside of Boris Continuum Complete 9, and one thing that I noticed about them is not only are they very different and very unique, but I also have the ability to get in and to alter them to make them essentially different. So, for example, let's say I have a transition that's a glitch transition, I have it 15 different places in my timeline. I can actually get in and tweak that transition 15 different ways to always make it look different and always make it look unique and it's something that you would never get bored of. Now, before I go on, I do want to mention something that I think is very important and that is that as of this recording, a new release of Boris Continuum Complete 10 has been sent out into the wild and that's version 10.0.2. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, you know, I've got everything running the way that I like it. I don't really need to get in and update things, but you know what? It's very important that you do this. Now, before I go on, I want to point out that when you made your purchase of Boris Continuum Complete 10 or even a previous version of Boris Continuum Complete, you would have been signed up for the Boris FX newsletter. Now, if you don't receive it, I encourage you to check your spam filter to make sure that the newsletter is not getting trapped in there. Why is the newsletter great? Well, the newsletter is great because not only is it going to give you information like when a new version of BCC is released, you'll see here version 10.0.2, but it's also going to give you links to other great things like live free webinars, in this case, for example, Mocha Pro for Avid Editors, and even when great sales come along. And the great thing is, is that when you're informed about a new update for BCC, not only can you download it right here from the newsletter, but you also have a link to the release notes. Now it's funny because you know the release notes with Boards Continuum Complete are kind of like the release notes I get when I get Media Composer. The first thing I always do is jump in to see what's new and it's no different here. I can simply click on the release notes for Boards Continuum Complete and I can see not only what was updated inside of 10.0.1 but also right back to the initial release of 10.0 and you'll see that I can get in and see the general enhancements like the support for the Avid's separate filter and transition palettes inside of 8.5 and above, all the way down to specific filter enhancements. You'll see what's been updated in the Mocha slash Pixel Chooser and take a look at the updates for Title Studio. These are massive updates for just one effect inside of the package. So you'll see that once BCC was sent out into the wild with version 10, development never stopped. Updates are always being made and always make sure that you download and are working with the most recent version of the plugin package. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I have just a timeline with two shots in here that we're going to add a few different transitions into just so I can show you how the transitions differ slightly from transition to transition. Now something else that I didn't mention that I probably should have when we were talking about getting the most recent version of Boris Continuum Complete is that one thing that I love is that the development team is always sliding in new presets constantly for you to work with. Let me give you an example. I'm just going to come to the effects palette. Let's come to BCC Stylize, and I'm going to grab the BCC Video Glitch Real-Time Filter. Let's take this, let's drag it and drop it down onto our shot. Now, one thing that I want to point out with this effect, and one thing that I really like about it, is that if you take a look, this is not an effect that's overlaid over top of your footage. It's actually distorting the footage. Take a look at how it's torn 
are, I guess he's a paraglider. He's a, he's not a hang glider, but he's got his parachute here. So we'll just call him a paraglider for right now. You can see how it's torn right through him. Very cool. And what I wanted to point out in here is that if I step into effects mode, you'll see that we now have a staggering amount of presets with this effect which we can use you know, with a click of a mouse just to get us going somewhere, or we can use it as a base to build a better preset or a better version of the effect right on top of it. Okay, now one of the other enhancements that I did mention with BCC 10.0.2 is the fact that now if I come back into the effects palette by hitting Command and 8, you'll see that we have the Filters tab, which you can find the transitions in, but more importantly, if you like to go to the Transitions tab, you can click on it, and there's the BCC Transitions category right there, and you can now choose from any one of the transitions to start working with. Now, one thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to start out with my Lens Flare Transition. This is one that I like to use as a bit of a variation on the Flash to White, a Flash to White very common effect that editors are always using. This is one that I really like, and I'm going to use the Lens Flare Dissolve effect. I'm simply going to take it, we're going to drag it and drop it down onto our shot. Once it's there, you'll now see that the Lens Flare appears. Now, I talked a little bit in the intro about how effects can become quite stale. Now, if we were to take this effect, I mean, right now it's a second long. You'll see I can come back and just hit play. There's our transition. Very cool. You'll see it sort of comes, appears in the upper right, goes down to the lower left, then disappears. And that's kind of great and everything. But again, after about five or six versions of this transition, it's going to get a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive. But the great thing is that once you step into effects mode, you're immediately going to notice the on-screen widgets. Now, let's ignore those for just a second. These being the on-screen widgets right here. The ability to get in and adjust our ease in and ease out and even the ease mids of our transition. We can get in and adjust the position and such and the like. But I also want to point out that again, much like with every other effect inside of Boris Continuum Complete, you do have the option of coming in and choosing from different looks right there. Boom, there's a different look right away. Now for me, the only thing is I'm never really big on the transition happening right dead in the middle of the screen. So let's get in and let's alter that a little bit. What we have the ability to do is to grab any of these widgets. So for example, let's take the position start. I'm going to take it and drag it up here to the upper left hand corner so that our flare can almost come right from there. Just like that, it's going to come in and disappear. Now you're going to notice that we can see the effect dissolve because this is called a lens flare dissolve. You can see it dissolve at the midpoint. So how do we get in and adjust this transition to get rid of that? Well, no problem. I just need to get in and adjust the brightness of the flare a little bit. Let's just come down to our flare parameter to the intensity. Let's just drag it up a little bit to about there. I don't necessarily need to fill the whole screen with it. But now basically what I've done is change the position, the look, and the intensity of this flare just like that to create a whole new effect from where we started. I can just come back here. I can step into the effect. And what I can do is just bring it right back to the beginning by just coming right back to the reset to factory default. And there is that transition now back to where it was before with it starting in the upper right and going down to the lower left. Now, a couple of the other on-screen widgets or parameters that I want to talk about here. We talked a little bit about the dissolve happening because this is called a lens flare dissolve transition is the actual dissolve itself. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to switch back to that preset we just picked, which was Digicam Sun. I'm just going to take the sun. We're going to stick it way up here in the upper left hand corner just so we can see this dissolve happening here. There we go. Now, you'll see that it's a fairly quick dissolve. And we can make it even quicker by actually grabbing the dissolve duration just like such and shortening it. All this just with the on-screen widget. You'll see now that that dissolve is pretty much now happening over a couple frames. If I want to stretch out even longer, we just take it, drag it the other way, and there we go. We have a now a much longer dissolve based on however we want this effect to work. Now again, in most cases, we're going to have the flare covering the entire shot. So the dissolve we're normally going to want to have as quick as possible. And last but certainly not least, if we'd like to get in and actually impact the type of animation, we can get in and adjust the ease in and the ease out of our keyframes and even the ease mid if we want to to really customize this transition however we like. 
And of course, at any time, we can just come over and we can create a new preset and save this out. Or, of course, I can always take this effect. Let me just shorten this up a bit. I'm just going to make this about 12 frames. And I can take this effect and now just simply grab it and drag it and drop it into my bin so that now, any time I might need it, we're able to take this effect, select the transition, double click on it, and the transition is now all set to go at any edit point that we might need it in. Okay. So let me show you one other effect in here. This is another one that I really like, and it's the video glitch effect. Now it's called cross glitch, of course, real time in this case. I'm gonna take the cross glitch effect, we're gonna drag and drop. Now anyone that's familiar with the Boris Continuum Complete effects are gonna recognize these specific on-screen widgets. Now, what do these widgets represent exactly? Well, another great feature inside of BCC is that if you hover the mouse over any one of the widgets, you'll actually get an immediate information or immediate feedback as to what this parameter is. This parameter is for the glitch intensity, this one is for the block damage intensity, and the furthermost ring or the furthermost widget is for the flicker group intensity. And at any point all we need to do is simply take one of these and just grab it and adjust it however we might need it. You'll notice that we got an update immediately right up there. We can also grab the glitch intensity, drag that up a little bit, very nice. And at any point when we're done we can simply come back, hit play, there's our glitch effect. And of course, the next time we drop it in, all we gotta do is come back, just make a few minor adjustments here to this effect. And guess what? We've now created another completely brand new transition, literally in a matter of seconds. And that's one of the beauty features of, you know, not only the transitions, but really all the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete. You can get in, start with a preset, drop it right on there, get in, make a few little minor tweaks to each one of the instances of the effects in your shots, and literally have a new effect every time. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.